They call us the sunburnt country. Think of Australia and think of a wide brown land, a land of little water. Yet supremely, we are an island, a vast continental island, lonely in the hemisphere of oceans. Founded by seaborne settlers, Australia is still a maritime nation. The seas are still our lifelines. And if we sleep, the sea is our Achilles' heel. Tomorrow as yesterday, today and forever, the task of our Royal Australian Navy remains the same, to be ready to ensure the essential freedom of the seas. In the Navy of the 20th century, science is met by science. The Royal Australian Navy is prepared to meet the challenge. The missile age brings a new silhouette at sea, the guided missile warship. The most modern in the world, destroyers of the United States Charles F. Adams class are the Royal Australian Navy's new generation of versatile warship. The eyes, ears and teeth are new. The captain on the bridge commands a wealth of equipment with a range of perception leaving little opportunity for surprise attack from above, below or on the sea. In the nerve center of the ship, where reports from far-flung probing impulses are collated, a ceaseless watch is kept on all possible threats to the destroyer herself or the ships she may be escorting. From this centre, the captain draws the information that enables him to be one step ahead of any lurking attacker. Contact. Remote from physical sight, an approaching aircraft is relentlessly and accurately tracked. Its course and height are relayed to the captain. Now it's a matter of identification as the ship is manoeuvred ready for instant action. Identified as hostile, the bogey is assigned to the missile system. The Tata missiles, radar controlled from the ship, are endowed with the awesome power of homing on their target. Covered eye, locked on, bogey one, altitude 25,000, course 150, speed 600 knots. Permission to fire. Bridge eye, take bogey one. With Final adjustments. Fire. This is the course of our Navy today. But perhaps the greatest threat to our island continent comes from beneath the sea. However, the submarine need not only be an enemy. This is a British Oberon-class submarine coming into service with the RAN. At once, a realistic quarry for the training of our own anti-submarine forces and a deterrent to would-be aggressors. The Oberon class is designed for continuous submerged patrol. It is itself primarily an anti-submarine craft, capable of high underwater speeds, equipped with the most modern detection devices and armed with lethal homing torpedoes. Oh, yeah. 
All ships of the Royal Australian Navy have a continuous program of training, both within the ship and in cooperation with other units, to ensure instant reaction when the pressure is really on. Fifty-five and up. Fifty-five and up. Standby queue. Standby queue. Twenty-five feet. Two feet. No. Hang on. Thirty feet. Low queue. Low queue. Thirty-five feet. Three starboard main vent. Hang on. Forty-seven feet. Half head together. No, it's shutting both pins in. Half head. Yeah. Uh, telegraph crew three half head together. All main vents reported shut. Hang on. As well as the most advanced conventional submarines, Australia has the most modern methods of hunting the underwater enemy. Operating from ship or shore, Westland Wessex helicopters are equipped to seek out and destroy hostile submarines. Helicopters from an aircraft carrier can act as a mobile defensive screen all around the convoy. The, ball. the detection device is lowered into the sea while the crew is poised for immediate action. Already the Wessex is in operational service in Australia. Capable of day or night, all weather operations, the speedy seek and kill helicopters are an important addition to the RAN's anti-submarine strength. For a nation dependent on the sea for 99% of its vital overseas cargoes, the danger of wartime mining is a threat that cannot be ignored. These little ships are the RAN's answer. They are ton-class minesweepers, equipped to seek and destroy all types of mines. Constant training develops the teamwork necessary to cope efficiently with the complex assortment of gear on the sweep deck. There are many kinds of mines and our sweepers are equipped to deal with them all. In a set position and depth by floats and vanes, a wire sweep is used against the moored mines.
cutters on the sweep cut the mooring cable and the mines float to the surface where they can be harmlessly destroyed. Against influence mines, the sweepers tow a magnetic loop. Pulse generators send a powerful current through the loop, setting up a magnetic field so strong that it detonates magnetic mines well clear of the ship. Another weapon in the armory of the minesweeper is the noisemaker. It simulates the engine vibrations of a ship, setting off the dreaded acoustic mines. A transfer of stores and mail at sea demonstrates a high order of seamanship, as well as the responsiveness of these rugged little ships. modern navy, geared to an age of science, three elements abide, the man, the ship and the sea. Survival at sea today depends greatly on successful defence against air attack. As its latest and deadliest close range weapon against enemy aircraft, the RAN has chosen the Sea Cat missile. This is controlled by an aimer who simply manoeuvres the missile onto a collision course with the attacking plane. Unmanned, recoverable target planes are used to test the ship's defences. The radar and weapons control room is the hub of the exercise. The ship's eyes quickly pick up the target, which is tracked and classified. Authorised by the captain, the gunnery officer indicates the target to the weapon system. The rest is routine and skill. Today, more than ever, the effectiveness of a navy depends upon its ability to remain at sea in fighting trim. To cut down on the frequent requirement to return to port for fuel and stores, the RAN has HMAS Supply, a fast fleet replenishment vessel that can refuel ships while underway at sea. 
The captain of supply personally supervises preparations to refuel HMAS Melbourne and HMAS Anzac. Once again, constant training ensures the readiness of the Navy for all eventualities. There are three pipelines to each link, so that all kinds of liquids, including fresh water, can be pumped across at the same time. Each side operates separately so that both ships being replenished get their own requirements. If necessary, HMS supply can refuel three ships simultaneously. Operating at speed, the manoeuvre calls for superb seamanship from tanker and warship alike. Thanks to replenishment at sea, warships can remain on sea patrol for increasingly long periods. This is organisation unlimited. The net result? Mobility and flexibility of operation. Prime essential for a modern navy. Ships that supply, ships that fight, Missiles that range far into the sky, helicopters that probe beneath the sea, minesweepers and submarines. The keynote of the Royal Australian Navy as it responds to the harsh challenge of the missile age is versatility. Ready for any eventuality, it has set its course for tomorrow.